Hello! Welcome back! What we're going to be doing today is processing fruit, processing a few food products that we got our hands on. First thing we're going to do is make, uh, is prepare a, a brew, a fermented brewed beverage. It's kind of like a sparkly juice. We've already made a couple. Uh, from different things and they came out pretty yummy. They're mostly sour. They don't taste sweet at all, really. And uh, let me show you one that we made. So the first one we made was with uh, lychees that we had that were already going bad, primarily. Um, the second one we made was actually, here it is, I'm showing you. So a little drink of it, it came out pink because we put some cranberry hibiscus, which is a plant I've covered in another video, um, in it, and that dyes things red. We also put a couple chili peppers, tiny ones, just because we have so many of them, and we thought it might be fun to see how they were in, a, in this brew. And the last thing we put in it that we felt very fancy about was loads of flowers. So we have a lot of flowers that just bloom, and they, they weren't really um, fragrance-bearing flowers, but we thought, oh, how cool if we have orchids in our <laughs> in our drink. So that's how that happened. I will try this one, see how it is. See, it's still got a couple bubbles in it, but it's mostly just sour. It smells sour. Oh yeah, oh, very sour now. <laughs> it's been sitting for a few weeks now, for sure. They don't go bad because they're already fermented. So they just, they just hang out. But uh, this one, um, it doesn't taste very spicy now. At first it tasted quite spicy. Now it just kind of tastes sharp. Whew. It's good to cut with, uh, with water as well if it's like too strong for you. And the other ones are in jugs just like this. This is a sake jug. Honolulu Sake Brewing Company, located in Berkeley, California. <laughs> they have a really... I love the label. It's so cool. This is like the cheapest alcohol. <laughs> or the cheapest sake you can get at the store. So this has been... This is empty. It's just been sitting around. It hasn't been washed. It's still got alcohol in it when I opened it. Yeah, it still smells like alcohol, so we can be pretty sure that it's um, sterilized. And the first thing I'm going to put is pineapple rinds. Our friend was going out of town. She gave me her tiny pineapple that she hadn't finished eating. I just cut it up. I put the top in the ground. I'll show it to you later. Put the top in the ground, and I'm going to use these as the one of the starting materials for this brew. So they're just... And this is something our friend and neighbor um, introduced us to. He was he made his own pineapple brew and he did it with the rinds, not with the juice. So it's like you, you get to use the outside as well. It's not like... It's not garbage. No plant matter is garbage here. It all goes to some use. All right. So that's that. The next thing we are going to put in is this tiny thing. What is it? So we grew this actually. It's probably a melon. We're gonna, I'm going to cut it up right now. This is going to be a, an unveil. Let's cut you up. We're all going to learn together what's in it. Oh, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's tiny cantaloupe or something. Look at that. We've had no luck at all growing like really any squashes, pumpkins, um, or cantaloupes. So like these are like related to pumpkins and stuff. We had a couple of very, very bushy local pumpkin. The kabucha pump, what you might know is the kabucha pumpkin is like the main kind of pumpkin around here. Um, 
We've had a lot that have bloomed and have become, you know, really big plants, but then they just died without producing anything. <laughs> so, apparently there aren't really any um, pollinators for that kind of plant here. So, I tried to pollinate them myself, but I guess it didn't work. One of the things that we do here is we save loads and loads of our seeds. Basically everything we eat, the seeds gets put in the ground. So I'm going to just, you know, because this is our first sort of successful seed bearing. I don't know what, melon. It's called a melon. That's what it's called. Our first seed bearing melon. We are going to... I'm going to save all these seeds and then plant them. Oh, look at this. I bet this is going to be so good. Get these little seeds. All of you. I want all the seeds. I think that's all of them. All right, here goes. Epic taste test. Tux, are you going to join? Too sweet. Mmm. But definitely good. Yum. I'm gonna give this other half to James. Put in a little cup like this for him. And then I'm gonna cut these rinds up. And there we go. Cut these rinds up and stuff them in the doesn't really matter the size for these it's just um, so long as they fit in the bottle let's see what else we have around here oh yeah the lilacorn this is another exciting thing do you know what this is this is what we call here a lilacoy you might know it as a passion fruit. Passion fruit come in multiple colors when they're ripe. Yellow, purple, and orange. Orange is the rarest around here. I like purple the best. Some people like yellow the best. Some people can't tell the difference. So this is our very first Lilacoy harvest ever. In three years, we planted loads of lilacoy because we love lilacoy. Our friends gave us a big bag of lilacoy seeds. We planted it. But this is the very first one we've had. Even though we have very big vines, they're viney. They're like, have a big base and then they're a vine from the main base. They grow all over everything. They grow really well here. You don't need to uh, take care of them hardly at all. They can deal with the, they can deal with the, rain, they can deal with dry, they're just very well suited to this environment. One of the things we try to do, sorry, I gotta take my, my brew sip. One of the things we try to do is grow the things that do well. I think that's a really good tip. Like, you're gonna spend, you might spend all your time babying something that, you know, taking care of it and, you know, if it, if it's something that doesn't, and then, you know, something else that you look at, it'll be just doing well completely on its own. I like to grow those things. If you're wondering where, what I'm looking for, it's somewhere to put the little delishy juices. I don't want to spill any of it. Oh, it's so tiny. TD! <laughs> if you get a little koi, like, from you know, the market or from friends or something. Usually the crust will be like half as thick and there will be, but these are nice big plump seeds. I'll scoop them out too.
There we go. Look at this little baby. Little baby. I'm gonna try just a little bit of the juice because we're gonna plant. We're gonna plant these seeds. So. Very sour, but unmistakably lilacoy. And I'm gonna put this in there. These rinds as well in there. Serious rind. There we go. All right. And these are going to get planted. So here's what we have in our bottle. What we're going to do now is top it up with water and honey. These are our ingredients. water jug I'm gonna do this right here. Freshly filtered rainwater. This isn't full all the way, I'll finish it up later because I have to filter a little bit more water. Now we're going to do the honey. This is honey that a friend gave us as a gift. A jar like this would be, I don't know, I would, it would be expensive. I would guess at least $15 minimum, minimum probably. Half of this would be maybe 10 or 8 but we have amazing honey here, so, and it keeps forever. And then you just have honey. Who cares if your honey is expensive? It's honey. It's amazing. Crap, I didn't really pay attention to how much it was. Let's do a little more. Another big pour. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Big treat. So what's gonna happen now, I'm gonna fill it up with water all the way, but I'll just show you as if I already filled it up. You shake it. And then just leave it in a corner for a couple weeks. It should start bubbling pretty quickly. We have an extremely warm and humid environment here, so something like this will start bubbling almost immediately. If you're not seeing any um, any bubbling, then you might need a warmer environment for it. Um, put it outside, whatever, it'll be fine. And in about minimum of, th I think minimum of three days, I can't quite remember because I haven't made the other ones. Um, that's sort of the shortest amount of time that it takes here in our extremely warm and humid environment. But you can leave it at, you know, a week, longer. Our friend, after three days, he puts it in the fridge because he likes to have bubbles in it. He likes his fizzy. But um, we don't like ours fizzy. We're kind of indifferent toward bubbles. So we'll let it process all the way. Now, what's the process that's happening in here? They're little, little bacterias and they love to eat sugar. They'll eat sugar and then they extract air, James, and alcohol. Hey, James? Yep. They extract air and alcohol? Extract? The produce alcohol. Produce alcohol and air, right? Carbon dioxide and alcohol. 
carbon dioxide and alcohol is what is produced by the by the are they bacteria yeah, well they're yeast yeast so there's wild yeasts all over everything so like the outside of these fruits should have wild yeasts growing on them and um you know i think that like the more kind of crinkly and rough the skin is like on a pineapple or on a lychee let me show you the lychee skin like this it's a lychee that's gone bad there's like more surface area for there to be um yeast in some people put in their own yeast or like they have special yeast that they always use but we just use whatever is wild around here we've had pretty good results and so they eat sugar they'll eat the sugars from the fruits they'll eat the sugar from the honey you can also use sugar sugar in yours if you make this at home and they'll poop out a little bit of alcohol which will make it sour and the carbon dioxide when the carbon dioxide when they finish producing there won't be any more bubbles because they're not producing any more carbon dioxide and then you can drink kind of a I guess it has a some percentage of alcohol, but we don't know what, like we haven't felt any kind of alcoholic effect from what we've been drinking. And it probably has to do with how much sugar we put in. Like if you want an actual alcoholic effect where you feel it, I think you would have to put like loads more sugar, like two cups or something. So, um, but we like it like this because it's just a nice thing to drink. It's like having a nice juice that you don't have to keep in the fridge. And it gets hot and humid here, so it's nice to have juice. All the shaking is helping. I want to show you one more thing. So that's the brew process. I'll check in with you later. We'll try this brew, maybe in a week or two. This. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. Something I already... Can you tell what these beauties are? That's right, they are noni fruit. Noni fruit. Noni fruit grows um, pretty free, kind of on its own, along shorelines in Lower Puna in Hawaii. Um, I was there the other day um, with a friend. And I saw a bunch of ripe nonis right on the side of the road. Didn't look like it was anyone's property. It was just, you know, forest. So I went ahead and grabbed these and decided I would try to make a fermented noni juice. So noni, the fruit, tastes horrible. And when it starts to go bad, as it has here, you see how it's looking kind of like on the tree, if you see it, it's probably going to be like green. When it's starting to get ripe, it turns this sort of yellow waxy color. And you see how it's starting to get clear here? That's it really kind of starting to decompose. And it's where it smells powerfully like rotten cheese. Like it smells so bad you can't have it in your house. But Noni is supposed to be very healthy. Many people I know swear by it. And... The way that it's usually processed is that it's fermented and then there's a juice and you drink the juice. Most noni juice I've had has been disgusting, just like undrinkable. Like I would never drink it again. So bitter and horrible. But our friend who is a gardener in our, or who's a farmer in our neighborhood, she loves noni. She has loads of noni trees. And the way she prepares her fermented juice is she gets a big jug, kind of like a mouth, wide mouth version of this and puts them all in no no water no salt no sugar nothing no additions just the fruit puts them all in and puts them on top of her car hood in the sun for two weeks I think and then they decompose and there's juice on the bottom you strain it I don't know if she pulps it also but she definitely strains it and that's what she drinks and that's like her noni drink and I had some of it and it was not bad it was not bad at all it was completely drinkable so 
and this noni was free so I decided to give it a shot so I packed these earlier today um, because they were starting to smell powerfully of rotten cheese what I did was I just washed them in water because they had you know some dirt from the tree or whatever from being out in nature I washed them just packed them in these jars and I put them out in the Sun they're already like warm these jars are warm so and look, it's already kind of starting to get liquidy so I'm hoping that this will go well I will similar to with this brew I will show you the results once it's ready I'm gonna put these back in the Sun and what I also got this is the friend that I went to Lower Puna with she told me that she also makes tea from the leaves and she showed me what she does she gets harvests after asking the tree please may I have a leaf thank you for your donation of a leaf um, you pick kind of like a, a, a healthy clean leaf like this and you can cut it up I don't know how big but whatever and then steep it in hot water like a tea she does hers with a few other things because she has serious digestion issues so she she makes this kind of like medicinal tea with noni and a few other things but I'm gonna try it just plain with noni and see how it comes up I'm gonna not do it right now because we don't have our boiling water and I haven't cut this up I wanted to show you the full leaf um, but I'll make a video later and show you how it comes out maybe it'll be terrible I'll add a teaspoon of honey to it if it's terrible it'll be fine noni leaf now you know what noni leaf looks like just as a warning if you go climbing into trees you will get red ants rain down on you if you're not careful and they bite really bad and also don't forget anything you touch in the forest might be covered in red or black ants so before you pick it up look down and once you pick it up shake it off the ants will probably start crawling out and then you just shake them and shake them and then they'll fall down and everything will be fine do I have anything else to show you here? Naran here. This one has started to go bad. It looks like a for the plant of for this looks like a four foot tall eggplant plant covered in like hair and spines. We had one that just grew. I have no idea how it got there. Ew! All right. Well, that's going to be seed. <laughs> Alright, I want to show you one more thing. I'm going to take the cap. Whoa, what's this? That's right, when I went to, I went to Lower Puna where I got all that noni stuff, I also harvested a coconut from uh, the beach. Not a very big coconut look like this At the end was kind of messed up already it was filled with ants I looked down there and shook them off then today I busted it open the machete that I used to open it machete it is of course better to have a coconut specific machete that's like in really great shape to make this process easier but we just have normal kind And I set it in this block because that's easy for me and just kind of started whacking at it from different angles finally made a hole in it now there's two I don't know if you've ever opened a coconut before but there's two layers there's this layer which is the outer green part and it has all these strings then there's the inner layer that is the brown hairy hard part that you've maybe seen in uh, in grocery stores but that that brown part actually comes with this all around it you have to get rid of both of them first this one came out really easily not sure why possibly because the water in it was bad you see this so this is the liquid that came out of it 
see how it's not clear so if it's if it's fresh coconut water it should be clear like the coconut water in your bottle and it should not it should smell nice and fresh this smells this smells off you know it smells kind of fizzy and sour I'm not even gonna drink it but it might be possible to make a fermented beverage similar to the brew it is still doing our research I'm saving it for now um, I'm sure we'll do something with it because it's already fermenting already fermenting and then with this stuff the coconut husk I don't know what we'll do with it maybe just put it somewhere in a hole there's also probably meat in there I might bust it open further and look at the meat maybe it'll still be good I'm not really sure so that's about all the food this is I just wanted to show you what it was like in this coconut and if you have a coconut you know it's green you think oh it's a good old coconut the inside's probably gonna be real fresh no it's not real fresh I had a it, I thought that that might be the case because of this and because there were already like ants and stuff in there I thought it might have already been kind of messed up let me show you a couple more things first of all Use the top of the pineapple. Remember the pineapple rinds I put in earlier? They came off this tiny pineapple. The beautiful thing about pineapple is you just stick it in the dirt like that. It'll go to town. I might clean the fruit off of this because roots are going to come from there. Might be better if I clean the fruit, but whatever. Someone, nature will take care of it. And pineapples are cactus. They go pretty well almost anywhere, so I'm just setting it down there. Maybe I'll mulch it later. The last thing I want to show you is a few of our things in water right now. Do you know what this tree is? This is a tree. Do you know what kind of tree this is? It's a plumeria. Plumeria is a very popular um, white, yellow, sometimes pink flower. Um, they smell wonderful. They just smell absolutely heavenly. They're very, you know, if you, if you look up plumeria, you'll recognize them. You'll be like, oh yeah, the Hawaii, you know, it's a Hawaii flower. We had some pretty big rain and wind maybe a week ago. I stopped at, um, uh, 7-Eleven in Hilo and I noticed around on the side of the 7-Eleven was this huge plumeria tree that just it was covered in blossoms and it, the whole ground underneath it was covered in blossoms. They'd all fallen. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is it. This is my chance to make a lay, finally. Because the thing about making a lay is like, when are you ever gonna have enough flowers, beautiful flowers to make one? Plumerias around here have like one to two flowers at a time. It's not like Kona side where it's all dry all the time. They have plumeria farms. No, but it's been pretty dry this year, so I think the plumerias are pretty, pretty flowery. So this branch had also fallen, and I was like, I am going to try and root a plumeria. So I just stuck it in some rainwater. I don't know if I feel good about how it's doing. If anyone knows about it, it feels slimy. It feels really slimy. I don't know if I should be giving it air. Oh, it's green under there. Maybe that's good. That seems good. Hmm. I'm just gonna stick it back in. I keep meaning to do the research, but I don't. Plumeria is pretty known for like looking like it's dead, but actually it's alive. So it might lose all these leaves. It already lost a bunch of leaves, as you can see. But it might still be very, very much alive and come back. This is some, something else we're rooting, sasu spinach. Oh yeah, look at that. See these little roots? Sasu spinach, or I think it's also called Argentinian spinach. Goes really well around here. The wonderful thing about it is that it roots from the stalk. And there are these little nodes every so often. The nodes are very close together, and each one of these nodes is capable of uh, starting roots. So it's very easy to propagate it, which means make more if you have one plant that's successful. 
really a lot of the time you can just stick these in the ground and they'll get going if you have good dirt for them. But I thought it might be fun to see how it does when it, um, that's too close, when it roots. And it's rooting pretty well. This has been in the water for maybe a week. Oops. This has been in the water for, de for at least a week. So what's this? Do you know what this is? It's doing less good. I think this is what's called a paper mulberry. And this is also, it was a little vine that I saw at, um, under the noni tree. And I thought, oh, well, just in case it's a, it is a paper mulberry, I'll take a little bit and see if I can root it. I was not optimistic because I kind of broke it, as you could see. I broke it a little bit. This one's very delicate, not like those other two. But it's just sitting here in this water. We'll see if anything happens. There's this cool little thing, this little bulb. I don't know if that's going to open and be seeds. I don't know what that's about. But yeah. I don't know if it maybe needs to be in less sun or something. This little thing, this little vine part is coming out good. Why am I growing paper mulberry? Because my friend who's a farmer had it. I don't know what she uses it for. I forget. I have to look this up. I think it's useful for making cloth, paper, and maybe tea. I don't know. I took it anyway. It's Marina's home for lost and wayward plants. So that's what we do here. All right. I think that about covers it. Thank you for joining me today. Give you one last look at a beautiful pineapple. Oh, hey, one more. These are peppers. This is a kind of pepper. I'll show it to you. It's in season right now, actually. Look at these beauties. These are from our garden. This is the pepper that we have in addition to the Hawaiian chili peppers, which look like what you um, tie, tie bird peppers. If you've ever seen those, they're teeny tiny and red. Um, so those peppers do really well here and these do really well. These are supposed to be a hybrid that um, maybe like local to our neighborhood, which would be really cool. But yeah, we got the, the plants that started these um, from a neighbor. And these are similar to those spinaches. Um, we're trying to see if they will also root from the, just from the branch. So these have been sitting in water for about, I don't know, maybe four days, four or five days. Nothing yet, no action yet. I don't see any rooting yet, but they do look pretty happy. Like they're, you know, they're not like totally wilted. They seem fine. So we'll see what happens. We'll keep you posted because we haven't had as much luck growing these, more of these plants from seed, even though there are plenty of seeds that come up in them. Maybe we haven't figured out yet how to make them sprout properly. So we're trying to propagate it via this method. All right. That's the survey. Thank you for joining me. We'll keep you posted on other farm adventures. Bye! Whoa!